Alright, what is up guys? This is P Man Vertigo. Welcome back to Kerbal Colonization. And in that shot right there of the map, you can see our satellites are in disarray. That doesn't matter, we're not gonna be dealing with that today. We're just kinda we're just kinda putting that off and putting that off. We're gonna change it eventually. I was thinking about having some sort of really system on our actual space stations and uh instead it'd be easier. But for now we're just gonna have limited communications, because who needs that when you're building a space station, right? And yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're launching quite the curious, uh, well, space little module here, and you might not know what it is. Now, I don't know what it is either, but it's basically, it's the only thing we have unlocked from modular colonization or whatever, besides the attack life support converters or whatever. And I thought it was pretty cool in one number one because it was a 3.5 meter part, and it's the basically the biggest thing we can have on the space station right now, and it weighs a lot. So I challenged myself to lift this thing up and dock it with the space station. So yeah, we're going to do some nice orbital rendezvous in four times time acceleration as we speed through because you guys have seen space station maneuvers before, at least you have last episode if you are here. If not, I recommend watching that because uh, that was a uh, that was fun too. So yeah, we're going to be coming in pretty close as long as we hit this maneuver just fine. And this thing is surprisingly maneuverable even though it weighs a lot. Let's see. Yeah, this is basically it's uh it's basically a science lab from regular stock Kerbal Space Program, except that instead of doing science, it trains Kerbals. So you know how Kerbals get their experience, they have like a one star, two star, three star, four star, or five star rating in their skill. Basically, what this does is it trains them up to those way faster than before. And we're gonna experiment with this. I'm not really sure how it works. I haven't actually watched a tutorial on it or Googled it. And I think it'll be more fun if I actually don't look up a tutorial on it. We'll figure out what it does by ourselves, shall we? The one thing I do know is it does have 12 seats. And that might become an issue. Because our tag life support only supports 9 or 8 or something like that. So that's an issue. So yeah, speaking of the space station's life support, we're here, we're here right now at the space station and we are... We need to start burning now. This is a problem. This is a problem. Oh, no. oh gosh. Oh gosh. Mayday, we're coming in hot. Alright, yeah. Basically, um... I thought we were going to crash in the space station there, but our, our skipper engine on the back, always doing its work. One of my favorite engines, actually. And it is putting this into a nice little section where we can actually start proceeding to dock with it. Now, we actually are going to dock with the fuel tank still attached to it because I did not have the foresight to put in the RCS uh, rocket control system propellant that's the stuff that comes out the side low thrusters I didn't put that propellant on the actual spacecraft I put it on the booster stage and this is never good to have number one because your back end is really heavy and if you try to move all your thrusters are on the front so you move like you move like a clock in, you move like around and not this is your center of mass, or you do move around your center of mass, but it's not where you want it to be. So basically your nose goes back and forth and it's just really messy. So yeah, next designs won't have that because that's a little bit of an issue. Here we are renaming the SSSSSS or 5S's or whatever it's called to the name which it actually means, which is the semi-self-sufficient space station. Because, you know, it's self-sufficient except for food. And I'm not actually sure how to make food. I'm sure I I think you can make food using greenhouses or something like that. You can grow like plants or something in the sky or in the in space. Which would be pretty interesting. I mean it's nice how it like takes it to into real life where NASA is actually NASA and the ESA is actually doing experiments in the International Space Station with plants and stuff, which is pretty cool. They're growing actual food in space. I think they've already grown like tomatoes or potatoes or something. And I'm not sure if they've eaten them yet. But yeah, this kind of relates to real life. How they're trying to make the space station semi-self-sufficient. So yeah, that's, there's a nice little inside look at the International Space Station. And how it compares to our, uh, well, space station with a lot more S's. So yeah, here we are. This is actually quite a painful docking scene, so I'm just going to spare you spare you the pain. Alright, I'll spare you the pain. Alright, so we had to take a cut there, because I had to spare you the pain, but I still have a few more minutes of pain. We've gone through 
like six and a half minutes. It's went from all the way from the day side of Kerbin all the way to the dark side. And you can see me there. I, I, this, the back end is so heavy and the front end is a little bit lighter because that thing on the front is actually not that heavy. It's heavy for a module, but it's not like chock full of fuel like the back is. So whenever I move, I move my, my axis and it's really annoying. I can't line up with the docking port and couple with that, I can't move myself sideways because this thing's pretty heavy. So yeah, docking is a challenge. It's not very agile. It's not very mobile. It's It never lines up right. So it takes us a lot of time. And finally, we don't actually dock. I just switched to the other vehicle rip. Okay. So I have figured out that it's actually easier to move an entirely docked together space station, which shouldn't even be stable. It's easier to do that than docking this module. It, I mean, it's it's still going to be worth it, obviously, because this thing's a big... I'm pretty sure it's a training center. So this is going to be good for our future progress, but it is still a pain. Probably the hardest thing I've docked, besides um, some experiments I've done in Sandbox. Alright, so we're trying to line up here, coming together. I really wish I had a docking cam on this mod pack, but I'm not going to install it, because I like the added difficulty of, you know, going in blind, like, stock... Or vanilla Kerbal Space Program. And we have attachment. Look at that. What a beauty. So yeah, let's just take that off. That thing's annoying as hell because it's kind of a... Well, it kind of just drags us down. So yeah, we don't actually have any more attachments on the back of this thing, but that's okay. You want to know why? Because I have a... Uh, well, I have a good solution for that. But that's coming up later. But for now, let's check out what the modular training center thing, Academy, is all about. So I took out the female Kerbal. Not sure what her name is. But uh, we're trying to find the hatch. I'm not sure where... Yeah, it says Training Academy right there. And it does seat 12 Kerbals. It's a very big module. Bigger than the rest of the space station, basically. And yeah... Oh, there it is. There's the crew hatch. There it is. Come up, and we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do with this thing. If we can even put the Kerbal inside, I know there's a transfer thing, but I just like flying sometimes. There's nothing we can actually do with it apparently right now, but I think you need to have a Kerbal that like. No, I'm pretty sure you need a Kerbal that's actually trained, like a two star, or three star, to actually duplicate its levels. But I don't know. We'll do some research. We'll figure it out for the next episode. Uh, we'll have it ready. Possibly. No promises. But anyways, here is the solution to our docking problem. And you may not see it now, but it is basically a large rocket. And uh, it's got some solid rocket boosters on the side and a big old fairy on the top. You know what it is? Actually, don't know what it is. Because it's hidden in the fairy. But, uh, yeah. Basically, spoiler alert, it's a bunch of docking ports, and spoiler alert, I left the aerodynamics things on just so you could see how bad this thing is at, you know, uh, well, it's really bad in the atmosphere. But this was the most compact design I could actually make, and yeah. So, um, we just kind of deal with it, because I, uh... Well, it doesn't seem to be too bad. It's just going in a circular motion. It straightens out by itself because it does have fins in the back. So the only way it would ever break is if the joint snapped. And I don't think that's going to happen. The joint, I don't think it will snap. Oh, we're out of fuel. And, okay, we didn't break any fins. That's good. Sometimes when you launch those solid rocket boosters, you kind of bust some fins. And that wouldn't be good. We'd flip right over. I'm burning more or less straight up, very inefficient. I'm actually burning to the left, which is very inefficient. Now I'm burning to the right, and the left again. Okay, this is not very good. Guys, launching space modules to the space station can sometimes be very awkward, because number one, if I didn't have this fairing on, it would be, probably, it wouldn't make it like a, a thousand feet off, or a thousand meters off the ground. But even with the fairing on, it's still aerodynamically uh, not... Not aerodynamically in design. So yeah. Uh, space modules. Hard to design, even harder to launch. And now that we're sufficiently high enough, we can actually start turning over because the atmosphere is starting to become less of a annoyance. 
we can actually use that twin uh, booster on the bottom there and hopefully get up to space. Now, I didn't actually speed up this uh, this launch, number one, because I thought it was pretty interesting and funny to watch, and number two, uh, I might give somebody a seizure or an aneurysm looking at that thing wiggle back and forth at four times normal speed, so yeah, I didn't want to grace you guys with that image, so we're just actually going to skip ahead before we get to the space station, because none of you guys want to see this. Alright, so we get to orbital altitude here, and we're, uh, well, we got a maneuver node that launches us straight into a path that actually intersects the... Uh, well, the space station. So we're we're going. I don't know why we're still off target. Okay, there we go. I don't know. We're we're still very uh. We're not very good here at being stable. I feel like the problem wasn't the aerodynamics. It was more or less just the struts on the internals. Yeah, basically we're launching a big old strut. Yeah. And this isn't the half of it. I'll show you guys what I mean when I get there. But um. As of right now, this is all you guys are going to see. Let's see. We, uh, yeah, we got the skipper again, pushing us straight to an orb, but we are, uh, actually taking a little bit longer, and we are flexing back and forth, and this is not good. Yeah, I really like the lunar lander can. I don't know why. It's not even my favorite cockpit. I like the, the Mark II, or the 2.5 meter command module better, but I don't know. This one just always works for whatever I'm doing. So yeah, we're going to get on... I don't even know if we're going to be able to intercept them with this, because uh, we're very inaccurate with our burn right now. We're probably not even going to come close. But um, hopefully we can get there eventually, right? That's the goal. Alright, so we're basically done with our burn here. So um, let's skip ahead a little bit. Alright, so only one small correction burn was needed. Basically because uh, we wanted the wrong inclination because we were wobbling too much. So I make sure... Use the smallest amount of thrust possible to avoid the wiggling. Because our struts are not working and uh, basically the entire top end is by itself. So if you go too fast, it wobbles a little bit too much. So yeah, we end up intersecting close enough, right? Fairly close, I'm satisfied with that. And uh, yeah, we're going to be coming up real close. Alright, so I actually activated MechJeb for this one to help my slowing down just because... This thing's not the most maneuverable, so I actually pre-planned my, uh, my slowdown. So yeah. Here we are. Getting very close now. Better start burning. And yeah. Basically done. Doesn't take that much delta V to slow down anyway. So yeah. Try to get as close to zero as possible. And bam. There we go. So yeah, time to actually uh, get this thing going. And to couple that, I learned my lesson from the other spacecraft, and I actually made this completely RCS, fully balanced. Should be a lot easier to actually dock than the um, that other module was. Number one, because it's a lot smaller. Number two, because I actually designed it to prioritize docking. So yeah, it's got two fuel tanks on the end, so that's going to be balanced no matter what. It's got all those uh, things in the middle to balance it out. So yeah, this should be good. Should be good. So yeah, we, we perform a textbook approach straight at the target. And now we're gonna we're gonna target the uh, left or I think that's I don't know, the, the downside, the the side that points south. We're gonna aim at that. Let's see, we got I think we're close enough here. Yeah, we can start trying to align ourselves as best as we can. So yeah, let's see what we can do here. We're getting a little bit too close now. Time to change the stage. By the way, the thing that I use for docking, I'm sure other people use different things, but I actually use stage view and docking view. It's a little green and the little purple symbols down on the bottom left. I know there's a way to actually use RCS via the regular keyboard, but I just have always used docking. So, it's just the thing that I like to use. Let's see, yeah, we are definitely a lot more efficient at docking in this one. Might even get a first try, possibly. Not going to get too cocky here, but this is a lot better than our first uh, try at the gigantic one, that's for sure. And this is actually a lot more important than the giant one. You guys already know it's a docking adapter, but I don't think you guys realize 
just how cool this thing is going to be. I mean, I put like an hour into this, and my friends hated this, hated me because I wasn't playing CSGO with them. Because I was designing this. I Okay, I might have exaggerated a little bit. It took me like 15 minutes, but it was still a long time for me to build something. Usually I'm just flying and, you know, crashing things. But this one I actually planned out. See how we're docking right here. And, um, a little bit rough. But, you know, docked anyways. So, yeah. So now you guys are going to witness what this thing is actually made for. Bring out Infernal Robotics. Bring them out. Look at the servo controls and what to remember. Oh, baby, a triple. Look at this. Look at this. I don't think you guys even know what it is yet. You guys probably guess, honestly, but... Look at that. Extendable docking ports. Isn't that cool? Seven of them, in fact. That means we can dock seven ships on there as long as they're small enough. And we'd be just fine. All in one tiny little four long structure thing using Infernal Robotics. And I happened to mess up because the fuel tank's still on there and we're rotated the wrong way. But that's okay. Because I've had my fun. So, okay. One rotation, or one half rotation, I mean. One 90 degree rotation and a uh, tank decoupler away. Boom. And another deploy away. Let's start deploying again. And I am satisfied with today's endeavors on Kerbal Space Program. Look at that. It's probably the most beautiful thing I made in Kerbal Colonization. Look at that. Perfect. It, it even extends at the same rate. Oh my god, I never get tired of these, dude. Infernal Box is one of my favorite mods for uh, Kerbal Space Program. Look at that. Beautiful. What we're going to be doing next episode is probably exploring more, getting more science, because we kinda, we're kind of we kind of running low on science. We need more of it for higher up things. It's starting to take a lot more science for each tier. And look, we can we should actually uh, bring some struts up here because we can actually use struts from a uh, Kerbal attachment system. We could make this thing a whole lot stronger because right now it's a little bit uh, rickety, but um, if we can fix this thing up a little bit, I think it'd be a lot nicer. So yeah, thank you for watching this episode of Kerbal Colonization. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, make sure you stay tuned because more stuff is coming your way. This is PVM Vertigo. Peace out.